Hello everyone, and welcome back to a new episode of Prismata. I'm gonna jump in the queue here and go watch. Sure, why not? X Nord versus Wonderful. Okay, second Winsor. Oh man, and uh, Oxide Mixer into Winsor. Alright, we have Red Rain in a 60 seconds base plus 10 game. It's gonna be a rough one. Red Rain is a pretty strong player. I think he's top 10 right now. Uh, boy, this is a pretty rich set. There's a lot happening. Um. Like, an early Flame Animus can get you Fangs, but I feel like Bombarder is the better direction to go for. On the other hand, you'd kind of like a Flame Animus to get you that red anyway. Can you, like, get Arms Races first? Colossus eventually? I don't know. I'm not that excited about getting green here, I don't think. No, oh, Fibroid's another good reason to go green, I guess. I think it's a bit tough to go third engineer here, just because... Like, Flame Animus is something you want to get in Artery. And so I think I want turn 3 Forge. into some flame animuses. While I drone up some more to support like bombarder kind of levels of tech. Yeah. I don't know if I want to get green involved just yet. I, I, I don't know. There's some pretty high tech stuff here, but getting the first bombarder is such a big deal. That I don't think I want to get a bunch of econ. I still don't understand like what what Bombarder does to games, how to build for it, and so on. I mean, opponent's cutting fine. I'm getting next turn like a flame animus and two drones, so there's no reason to get an auric here. I mean, opponent may well be the one getting first bombarder and reminding me like why it's so important to do that, right? Maybe you get second flame animus, second forge, and then you just start hammering me. That'd be kind of a bummer, wouldn't it? Maybe you grab, like, Splitter and Second Forge, actually. is kind of better than the conduit, isn't it? But I'm going to be facing 5 damage next turn. So I'll need more defense. And NG seems good. And then the question is like, conduit? I kind of like the idea of a conduit. I can respond with my own bombarder. And like a gauss cannon. And that's at least something. The second Bombarder is going to be the killer, though. Well, at least I'm making that difficult.
sure. I guess I did lose all my defense, huh? But opponent attacks for either two or five, so I'm actually perfectly granular with just a wall. Arms race seems laughable, right? I think so. Opponent would welcome some extra defense right now, I think. Oride core actually appeals to me here. Because next turn I kind of want to hold the Bombarder. And I want to spend my tech cheaply so I can grab a little bit of defense as well. Granularity, importantly. I guess you get a free splitter hold. Okay. So it's not true that you attack. But, I mean, it's not... I guess it is a useful splitter hold. Okay. Well, no it's not, because I'm not actually attacking next turn. So the splitter hold was pretty fake value. It, it meant I couldn't... it wasn't fake. It bought them some time where you don't have to defend against the possibility of me reaching you, right? This is a very greedy Gauss can. I don't know if I can justify this. Oh, I'm clicking the wrong Bombarder. I think. Yeah. I would really love to be putting 9, 12, 14 threat against opponent next turn. I guess they'll be okay. Because they'll have this bomb. They'll be holding both Bombarders as well. Um, but I think I should actually get defense instead. Because I don't have a lot of defensive tempo, and opponent's about to put on a lot of pressure. Oh, are they though? I don't know, they're not attacking at all this turn. Yeah, I guess I should realize that. Light exploit, I believe. Right, this is letting them keep four health alive, which is a bombarder. This is five health, which is impossible. No, it's bombarder NG. Well, never mind. If I clicked everything, this would be an exploit, right? They can't keep two health alive, but I really don't want to do that. I want to keep buying bombarders. Oh, whoops, I don't know why I, I, I left the or I clicked mistake. Opponent getting a Colossus is really sad for me. I did not see this coming. I wasn't really paying attention to what opponent was doing, to be honest. Um, I was just pick, like keeping my Bombarder line going and hoping that that's the way to win. Okay, yeah, the Rhino's a good gambit. It's looking like I may be topped out at not enough damage. But I guess that's why I'm adding these uh, Gauss Cannons. Not the best way to add damage, but take what you can get, I suppose. 
I probably need Denji's, don't I? Like, opponent's actually gonna click all this, I think. They'll have left the Rhino and the Colossus and one NG. Which means they have 8, 11 defensive tempo just lying there. 12. Am I gonna be attacking for more than 12? Or 5? 14? So they, they don't have to find a lot of extra damage. Defense, I mean. Gauss Cannon would force out a wall instead of a force field, but... I don't think it's enough. I think opponent just managed to squeeze in a little bit of extra attack with this Colossus, but on the other hand, I have a lot more defensive tempo with my Bombarder Chain? I'm not so sure. Okay, so how am I gonna deal with... They're gonna do 11 damage and then threaten 5... 7, 8... 11... Call it 12 more. I'll have s s s 7 in Bombarder Tempo. I'll need to find 5 more. 3 enemies in a force field, I guess. that. And Rhino Hold! Oh, I see. You needed that to get the Bombarder. And it's still doing an okay job of gambiting, I suppose. Uh, this kills one attack, actually, so I don't need the second force field. Yeah, I do. And it doesn't have to kill one attack. Opponent could absorb onto Rhino. So actually... Oh, and th these force fields are giving opponents Shiver Yeti value. So... I think I should try to click this Bombarder. Now opponent has, at most, 13 plus 2 if they absorb onto Yeti. Which is a serious issue for me, but, like, I don't know, if you breach for a Tarsier and give up your Bombarder Absorb and click everything, it costs you a lot. I don't know, it might be worth doing. I could or, I, or I'd click for one more Force Field, and this does defend. I'm gonna give this a try. Uh, instead of force field, I should have held a drone, so that I didn't... Yeah. When opponent doesn't actually click everything, I can get the drone back. And now, I just, like, don't have enough drones, right? It's not exactly a bed of roses over on the other side of the field, either. Uh, this is keeping three health alive, which is possible, but you can't keep four health alive. Absorbing onto Bombarder and keeping four alive, which is a Bombarder. So they're losing the Fibroid or a Bombarder, guaranteed. 
but not both. Um, five is wall fibroid if they want to keep that alive, which I don't think they do. So it's a mild exploit, I think. It makes it much harder for them to actually click, like, use all these bombarders. I really, really would like to get a second Oride core here, because money is pretty great. Can I justify cutting something? I could cut the force field and gambit the rhino instead. Right, because we proved opponent has to lose at least one of these two, even with the Oride click. So this is defended but gambiting the Rhino. Wow, that is bold. Losing a one stamina bombarder to get to attack with a fibroid? You're under a lot of pressure to be making plays like that. And, and losing the Bombarder, of course, takes a lot of pressure off of me. Uh, we should have... Well... Not much of an exploit available against that, I think. You better click the Colossus. I don't think you want to defend with that. See how amazing this Oride Core has been? I'm in love with it. The scariest thing right now is, like, Bombarder Supply, actually. If I run out of these, I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. So this is opponent keeping three health alive, right? What if I let you keep five health alive? Can't do that. This is not defended, however. I guess this is. Well, this is better, right, for the same reason we talked about before. NG is good, but it might actually be an Auric turn. Yeah, I'm gonna want multiple walls next turn, actually. And I should be able to keep these NGs alive. Uh, opponent can't really click everything, I don't imagine. is not exploitable. You're, you're, you're perfectly granular, but I do get to help you choose what you're going to lose. Um, although I think this is actually best. Get to keep three health alive. I don't want to let you keep all the bombarders. So you're losing a bombarder, which means you're down three attacks. So I don't need this wall. I can do something like this.
Actually, fibroids are better than rhinos right now. Keep floating the drone. guaranteed killing any damage. But it is a bit awkward. No, opponent will want to keep Fibroid the drone alive. So I might actually do this to make them want to keep Fibroid force field and lose the drone instead. I don't know. It's not really a compelling reason either way. What if I clicked everything? What's eight? Three here. I have to find five more. That's one of these in a wall. I don't know. We'll see. Actually, this is keeping three alive, right? How do you keep six alive? Only the two walls, which means you have to lose all this stuff. So this is my best shot, I think. I should have considered losing the fibroid, actually. A little late now. No, you keep six alive by losing the fibroid. That's the other way. Okay. alive, which is a force field. Yeah, maybe three. A little, a little better, like that. No. Like this. Or... Is there some way that making you keep five alive would be useful? Four gives you the drone back, which I don't like. I don't think I can usefully spend all my tech if I do it the other way. So we'll just go with this. this do I want you to keep alive? Four, ideally? So I want to lose two of my attack? Could be a fibroid or could be two Oride clicks, I'm not sure. Probably the fibroid, actually. Well, no, it's so hard to spend my blue otherwise. This fibroid is generating four dollars, right? I could give you back the drone to be, to be able to spend my blue. I think that's worth a try.
That's not what I did. Yeah, it is. I gave you back. That's right. Nine is keeping just a force field alive. I kind of like to leave things that way, but... Six attack is wall onto Bombarder. Ooh, what a grind. Glad to get a win against Red Rain, though. That's got to be, like, the highest ranked player I've ever beaten, right? Still wish they would, like, figure out how to make this not go out to 26 for no reason. Whew. I'm exhausted. Uh... I don't know. Opponent got first Bombarder. And it was a bit of a tough spot to be in. But... Somehow I kept the Bombarder train going for longer and used that to sneak in Gauss cannons, basically. Like, I don't know, what were the three units that were most valuable to me this game? Bombarder, Oride Core, and Gauss Cannon. Oride Core and Gauss Cannon are not normally superstars, but in this game I think they fit very well into what I was doing for some reason. Yeah, it's a bit awkward for opponent, right? Like, what to do here? You want to get the second Bombarder to really put the screws to me, I think. But if you do, you're gonna, like, it's kind of hard to... You have to hold the Bombarder to do that. And then it's not really applying that much pressure. I'm not sure. Like, that's, that's sort of a thing this even this very first Gauss Cannon did, is it took away the turn my opponent wanted to, to, to have. Right, opponent would love nothing more than to just, like, hold this splitter, I think, um, by a Bombarder. I don't know. I mean, it's getting mediocre Bombarder value because it only does two damage instead of three, but it lets you get a second Bombarder, which is really going to make life difficult for me, and I think it's worth accepting that reduced value in that case. Um, but it's a lot harder when, like, holding the splitter doesn't defend, and you have to hold a drone as well as buy a bombard. So opponent opted not to do that and just grab some walls. Yeah, I don't know. This this early Oride core, I didn't really see it. How much value it was going to give me later. I just kind of picked it up because I had blue I couldn't spend, and I knew I had next turn I would have attack I didn't want to spend. So I figured this is like put in a, a dollar, uh, get out two dollars, and uh, you know, maybe someday in the future you'll get to exploit them a bit. Um, but it was also like a thing that let me keep spending blue, which is one of the ways Oride right Core can shine. Not not the blue that I spent this turn when I bought it, but the blue in the much later game when I was clicking like three Orides. You know, I went from having eight drones and two blue, which is basically like unusable blue, to having 16 drones and blue. And then I could actually use the blue, right? So it's kind of like, a, in a weird way, a Blast Forge, right? It gives you access to more actually usable blue because you can buy attack, uh, you can click the Oride Core to get more money. So it extends the use of your blue in that way. I didn't really see that when I bought it here, but it was kind of cool that it happened. Um, opponent can't get anything out of clicking the splitter. They either attack for one or two, which are the same, or for four or five, which are the same. And Clicking the Bombarder, I think, was correct here, since you don't really need it for defensive tempo. 
I'm attacking for either two or five, both of which you want to defend wall splitter, I think. I don't know, if I attacked for five, maybe you'd be willing to lose both energies onto a bombarder, but... It would be a bit awkward, especially against someone with an Oride Core. And this way you just get the value right away and dare me to attack, which I'm clearly not going to do. So I think, yeah, you click it here. Was this, by the way, the last time all game I got exploited? That was another, like, that was one reason Oride Core was such a decider. Was that... I was able to persistently attack for numbers that were inconvenient for my opponent, and the, the reverse was not happening all that much. Um, yeah, I'm glad. Was this the turn I spent a lot of... No, I didn't spend much time on, on this turn about these three NGs. Not not a ton, anyway. Right, I got the Gauss Cannon and thought for 10, 20 seconds, got the NGs, but there was one time I put a ton of thought into it. Um, and you're seeing both of us doing something that I've talked about before in Bombarder games, which is you, you tend to want to hold back a single one stamina Bombarder as a defender, because you can always cash it in for three damage later, generally, right? Uh, and if that's not true, then like it means you couldn't afford to click it this turn anyway, sort of. Um, so your opponent has has to defend as much threat as if you were clicking the bombarder, um, but you get four additional defensive tempo for as long as you continue to hold one bombarder back, which allows you to do like plenty of cool things. Um, what's happening here? I'm letting opponent keep 5 health. Yeah, which is impossible. See? This Oricor really showing uh, great gains. An opponent tries to squeeze in a Colossus. I wonder if this was a like big mistake or not. They did actually survive with it. But, like, it took a lot of sacrifices, including, for example, not getting to keep the Bombarder defensive value. You got Colossus defensive tempo instead. Arguably better, because it frees up your Bombarders to soak. But it was kind of like, I don't know. I felt like I was somehow under less pressure because of all this stuff, kind of slowish stuff opponent was doing. They let off the bombarders for a while, and I could keep adding gas cannons. Ah yes, here's the one where I thought for a minute and a half about whether to get a gas cannon or three NGs. Uh, and I was pleased, although I didn't say anything about it out loud at the time, with how, like, at the end of this turn, all those three engines really mattered. Like, I cashed in four force fields. Uh, and it was still, like, just barely enough to do what I actually wanted to do on this turn. Um, whereas, like, one extra Gauss Cannon wouldn't really have made that much difference. It would have killed an Engineer, but I wouldn't have been able to take this turn at all. So... It was a good time to have stopped and thought. Was it really right to click this alright core? Why did I do that? Let's look at the beginning of my turn. Okay, defended like this, fine. So this is why I was saying I should have not built this force field, right? Well... I think if I'd held a drone... That would have been gambiting for exact if opponent chose to absorb on Rhino and click everything. And I don't think that would be so such a great thing to do, but maybe it would because opponent still wouldn't be killing any of my attackers and they'd have a very difficult time defending with one more bombarder clicked, right? So, I don't know. Maybe a slight 
misstep there. But I wasn't sad to have this force field the next turn, so... Yeah, so I don't know. I just, like, clicked things. I bought a Bombarder, obviously. I clicked Aurite Core to buy Auric Impulse. I guess it makes sense, right? Like, it's a three gold Aurite click. Because you get to invest the leftover gold. It gives opponent back a drone, but it gives me three dollars. Like, that's gotta be worth it, right? Drones are worth less than three dollars at this point, or else we'd be buying them. Okay. I think it was also something about what I planned to do next turn, maybe? I'm not sure. Yeah, and that three three bucks let me squeeze in a Gauss Cannon. Instead of, like, floating five. I don't know. Seems pretty cool. You know, another exploit. Just sickening value out of this one Aurite car. And opponent just couldn't quite get full value out of Bombarders was, like, the key problem that he was having. Couldn't quite get full absorb value because of my exploits. Couldn't quite get full attack value because he didn't have enough tempo. And I just want to impress upon you guys again how amazing these Aurite cores were. Uh, right, like, here we are. I have nine drones and I'm force fielding two of them. But I can still spend two blue and a red and keep buying NGs, right? Okay, so I, I gambited here instead of... Gambited the drone instead of actually force fielding. Probably didn't... Well, actually, I did get the drone back, because I didn't build a force field the next turn, so... Now I'm finally out of Bombarders, so I started spending blue on more Orion cores. And so, like, if you look at the econ graphs, I actually had more econ than opponent, like, all games. The attack numbers are a little bit harder to parse. I was a bit behind, but that's because I was turning a lot of mine into my economy, right? And since it's threatening, like, it's still getting attack value-ish, right? Opponent is having to build defenders, but I'm getting to, like, say, haha, gotcha. I'm gonna have money instead and be able to actually spend my tech. Um, like, if you, if you could look at a graph of how much tech we each spend, or floated. Uh, well. Yeah, like, opponent was often float. Like, this turn he floated a red and a blue, right? Here he floated nothing, which is pretty cool. But here he floated two red. Like, it's awkward. And I was mostly spending all of my tech, because I had stuff I wanted. Green for emergencies, but... Yeah, I just keep adding attackers. Alright, cool. Well, I'm very happy about this game. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.